In the first frame, we see someone opening their eyes. A young woman named Elizabeth had always dreamed of marrying a brilliant man who would take her far away from everything ugly into their own world. And her dream came true. Scientist Henry brought his wife into their luxurious home. The mansion was far away from civilization. Claire and Oliver, the household staff, welcomed the new mistress of the house. Elizabeth couldn't believe her happiness. In the evening, a sumptuous dinner was served. After that, Henry led his wife to their marital bedroom. In the morning, Henry showed Elizabeth her new magnificent wardrobe, and then gave her a tour of the house. Elizabeth's attention was drawn to the only locked room. She asked what was inside. Henry told his wife with a smile that everything in this house, including artworks and money, belonged to her. Elizabeth was only forbidden to enter that room. She promised not to do so. The next day, Henry went on a day-long business trip, and Elizabeth began to look around the house. Henry had won a Nobel Prize in medicine, which brought him immense wealth. Elizabeth was distracted by Claire, who asked her what she wanted for lunch. Elizabeth felt awkward because she wasn't used to being served. Hesitating, Elizabeth asked Claire how long she had been working in this house. Claire replied that it had been a while. Elizabeth wanted to understand why such an incredibly intelligent man like Henry had married such a simple girl like her. Claire had no answer to that question. During the day, Elizabeth spent her time reading and then trying on outfits and jewelry in her personal dressing room. Now Elizabeth had nothing but the very best. Before going to bed, after taking a bath, Elizabeth noticed through the window that Claire and Oliver were heading into the woods. Elizabeth couldn't sleep at all and came to the forbidden door. Elizabeth wanted to know what was inside. Remembering her husband's instruction, she returned to bed but eventually came back to the mysterious door. Using a biometric scanner, she entered the room. Inside, there were some unidentified devices, similar to freezers. The display showed someone's vital signs. Elizabeth accidentally opened one of the capsules, which turned out to be something like an incubator. Inside was a person in a state of hypersleep. Elizabeth ran away in fear, injuring her finger. She walked from side to side for a long time, not knowing how to make sense of what she had seen. At some point, Elizabeth decided to call the police, but there was no mobile network. She burst into tears. Waking up this morning, Elizabeth hoped that the events of the previous night were just a terrible dream. Soon Henry returned. He played the piano for his wife. Elizabeth tried to pretend that everything was fine and asked her husband how things were going at work. She also cautiously asked why there was no mobile network. Henry said it happens a lot around here. When asked who she had called, Elizabeth lied that it was her sister. At night, making sure that his wife was asleep, Henry left somewhere. But Elizabeth only pretended to be asleep. She decided to follow her husband, who took the elevator down to the basement of the house. Henry realized that his wife had disobeyed him and said she deserved to be punished. In tears, Elizabeth said she didn't know exactly what she had seen. Realizing that her husband wouldn't be stopped by this, Elizabeth rushed out in fear, but the front door was locked. Elizabeth hid while Henry searched for her. When he left, Elizabeth tried to escape from the house again but couldn't. She had to hide and tremble with fear, hearing footsteps nearby. Still unable to find his wife, Henry sat on the couch in the living room. Elizabeth came out of her hiding place, having no idea what to do now. As Elizabeth was walking up the stairs, Henry grabbed her and took her life. In the morning, Henry, Claire and Oliver organized a burial not far from the house. After that, they had breakfast as if nothing had happened. Claire believes they should stop, as sooner or later Henry will be caught. But Henry intends to continue the experiment. Claire left the table feeling upset. Oliver began to speculate that some substance or egg, could take on various forms. The egg was a symbol of the soul in some cultures for a reason. Later, a police car arrived at the mansion. It was Henry's old friend, Frank Logan, who asked about his young wife. Henry lied that she was sleeping. Frank in turn shared that there was an investigation in the department regarding bribery. Now Frank had to testify against his own colleagues. Henry reasonably remarked that it was better than being in their shoes. Meanwhile, Claire was making some notes, but she was interrupted by Oliver, who brought her a bouquet of flowers. However, Claire didn't accept the gift. Oliver guessed that Claire stayed because she loved Henry. Claire only told the guy that he didn't know much. But Oliver disagreed. He knew more than he would have liked. Claire asked Oliver to leave. All she wanted now was to be alone. In the next scene, we see someone opening their eyes. Henry brought his young wife back to the mansion. Elizabeth had always dreamed of marrying a brilliant man who would take her far away from everything ugly into their own world. This happened six weeks later. The story repeated itself. Henry had been through this many times before. All his actions were automated. As in all previous times, Henry strictly forbade Elizabeth from entering one single room. Elizabeth asked what was behind the door. To reassure his wife, Henry said it was necessary for his research. Elizabeth made a promise. The newlywed spent the evening in a romantic atmosphere. Claire watched all this. 
When her husband fell asleep, Elizabeth went to explore the house and saw Claire smoking in the kitchen. Elizabeth said she couldn't sleep because of her husband's snoring. Elizabeth also admitted that strange questions kept popping up in her head spontaneously. Claire wanted to say something, but Henry intervened. He couldn't allow Claire to spoil everything. The next day Henry left on a day-long business trip. Elizabeth called for Claire or Oliver, but it seemed like there was no one in the house anymore. It was pouring rain outside. To pass the time, Elizabeth tried on various clothes in her wardrobe. At some point, her own reflection caught her attention. Late at night out of boredom, Elizabeth against her husband's prohibition, entered that same room. What she saw made her scream. Elizabeth ran away in fear. In the capsule lay a woman who was an exact replica of Elizabeth. The clone left the lab and came to the room where Elizabeth was sleeping. At that moment, Oliver and Claire were heading into the woods. The next day at noon, Henry returned. Elizabeth wonders why she slept so long. Henry said he gave Claire and Oliver a day off. Looking disoriented, Elizabeth went into the bathroom. She hopes that the events of the previous night were just a nightmare. When Henry asked what she was thinking about, Elizabeth pretended to be washing her face. Then Henry barged into the bathroom. He said that a husband and wife should be honest with each other. Elizabeth doesn't understand what he means because she hasn't done anything wrong. But according to Henry, that's not entirely true. The wife disobeyed him, so she must pay with her life. Henry attacked her, but Elizabeth managed to break free and rushed out. However, the front door was locked. Elizabeth tried to break the window, but the glass was bulletproof. While Claire desperately tried to get out, Henry put on medical gloves and soaked a towel with halothane. Then he turned on a classical music record so that Elizabeth would think he was playing the piano. Elizabeth fell for this ruse. Henry took advantage of this and crept up behind her. But he had no idea Elizabeth had a sharp object in her hand. The front door remained locked. First, Elizabeth tidied up the house to eliminate traces of the gruesome struggle. Later, after tossing her pajamas into the fireplace and changing clothes, Elizabeth fell asleep on the couch in the living room. She was awakened by a phone call. The mobile network appeared, and Elizabeth dialed 911, explaining that she was trapped in her own house. She introduced herself as Elizabeth Kellenberg, but when the operator asked for the address, she was confused. Seeing through the window that the pseudo-servants were returning, Elizabeth returned to the couch and pretended to be reading. She claimed that Henry supposedly wasn't feeling well, so he was resting upstairs. Unsuspecting, Claire came into the kitchen but suddenly felt unwell and collapsed. Summoning her last ounce of strength, Claire called 911. The ambulance arrived and took Claire away. Elizabeth was about to walk out the door, but Oliver advised her not to do it. He knew that Henry was no longer alive and demanded that Elizabeth tell where she had hidden him. Elizabeth said that he had tried to harm her and led Oliver upstairs. While they were in the elevator, Oliver said that Henry was a brilliant scientist. He was the one behind everything that had happened. Oliver and Elizabeth disposed of the evidence together. Oliver explained that experiments on Genesis were conducted in this house, and Claire was responsible for growing Elizabeth. The girl asked Oliver to tell her what she was. He explained that she had entered the room where she saw herself. Six genetically identical copies had been grown there, resembling eggs. Now Oliver was talking to sample number six. What she heard made Elizabeth burst into tears. Suddenly they saw Detective Logan's approaching car, Henry's only friend. He was here to talk to Elizabeth. From Frank and Oliver's conversation, she realized that Henry was Oliver's father. The guy had lied about his father being asleep. Elizabeth confirmed Oliver's words, trying to act casual. Frank Logan said he was here because of the 911 call. Before Elizabeth could respond, Oliver intervened. According to him, the call didn't come from Mrs. Kellenberg but from Claire, who had heart problems. Perhaps the operator had made a mistake. The detective found it strange that everyone in this house had health issues. Henry was unwell, Claire had a congenital heart defect, Elizabeth had chronic fatigue syndrome, and Oliver was blind. At that moment, Oliver took out a gun and fired. Elizabeth was horrified, but Oliver said that Frank was dangerous. Once, when one of the clones escaped, Frank caught her and returned to Henry. Oliver no longer considered Henry his father, believing that everything he did in the lab was wrong. Elizabeth screamed that she just wanted to wake up and get back to the honeymoon. Once she calmed down a bit, they again disposed of the evidence together. Oliver advised her to pack her things, take money from the safe and get as far away as possible. Oliver on the other hand intended to stay. Elizabeth did just that. Returning to the dressing room, she cleaned herself up and retrieved the money. Before she left, Oliver asked her for a favor. He wanted Elizabeth to read Claire's journal for him. Elizabeth was scared when Oliver locked her in the dressing room. In despair, she screamed. Elizabeth didn't know whom to trust. In Claire's journal, there was talk of Dr. Kellenberg's scientific breakthrough in somatic cell research. After publishing and patenting the micro-DNA reprogramming technology, he became a billionaire almost instantly. 
Some time later, Henry invited Claire over. It was five years ago. Henry stated directly that he was intrigued by her research, which had been rejected by the entire scientific community. Henry saw potential in it and offered Claire a collaboration. At that time, Oliver was still a teenager. After introducing them, Henry showed Claire his laboratory, containing his biggest secret. Claire was shocked by what she saw. From an ethical standpoint, it was unacceptable. But that didn't deter Henry. He wanted Claire to help him crack the genetic code. Claire learned that Henry's wife, Elizabeth, had passed away from a rare genetic disease shortly after giving birth to their son Oliver. Henry had gone mad with grief and had cloned Elizabeth's cells, growing six copies of her. Henry's primary goal was to find a cure for his wife's illness. By the time Claire joined the project, only four subjects remained alive. Two years later, Claire succeeded. The scientists were preparing to awaken the first successful genetic copy of Elizabeth. Every night, Henry recorded messages for the subjects and played them music in the hope of triggering memories. But Claire had doubts. The subject emerged completely healthy, the look disoriented. It seemed that new Elizabeth could only remember what had happened in the last three seconds. Constant memory lapses prevented the clone from forming a coherent worldview. But Henry hoped that her memories would eventually converge. However after a while, Elizabeth's body could no longer take it. Also Elizabeth somehow found the lab and saw the clones. Elizabeth escaped barefoot. A police car was approaching her, and ultimately, Frank returned Elizabeth home. Claire lied about it being her niece, who supposedly has mental health issues. In the present, Oliver apologized to Elizabeth. He couldn't release her yet. According to him, Claire would spend a few more days in the hospital in return. In the evening, Oliver brought dinner. When he opened the door, Elizabeth attacked him and demanded the front door code. With no other choice, Oliver called the code, but it turned out to be incorrect. When Elizabeth returned to the dressing room, Oliver was no longer there. Elizabeth looked all over the house for him, but Oliver didn't even try to hide. He was in the laboratory, keeping the last clone alive. Oliver promised Elizabeth that he would release her once she told him everything Claire knew. Elizabeth didn't expect that Oliver to come up behind her and give her a sedative injection. The memories of all the clones were intertwined. Ominous delusional images related to the past kept popping up in Elizabeth's mind. Elizabeth woke up with a chain. She tried to break free but to no avail. Continuing to read Claire's journal, Elizabeth learned that in the past, Henry found the genetic copy without signs of life. Her organism eventually gave in. Henry believed that they needed to conduct more tests to determine the cause. Claire always did what Henry said, without asking too many questions. Perhaps she just didn't want to know the answers. An examination of the deceased clone showed that the genetic pathology had returned. Furthermore, it triggered cellular instability. The scientists tried all possible combinations but couldn't find what they were looking for. Soon the inevitable happened. A romantic relationship developed between Claire and Henry. One day Henry expressed the idea that they should admit failure and shut down the devices. He simply wanted his Elizabeth back, but the clones were not her. In the evening, Oliver brought dinner for Elizabeth. This time she couldn't escape. Oliver proposed a fair exchange. He wanted to know what Claire had written in her journal. Elizabeth didn't hide that Claire and Henry's affair started after the demise of the third subject. Oliver was convinced that it was not a failure. Henry intentionally damaged the specimens, and Claire found out about it. In reality the subjects didn't have any genetic pathologies. Elizabeth didn't expect to hear that Oliver hadn't always been blind. It turned out that a few years ago, he had witnessed his father treating one of the clones like a doll. Oliver couldn't bear it, and his father couldn't let things get out of hand. Henry told everyone that his son had lost his sight due to a fire. But Oliver only wanted to protect Elizabeth. Elizabeth's confinement in this mansion continues. Her only occupation is reading Claire's journal. She had decided to end her relationship with Henry, but they continued to work together. One day Henry confessed that he's afraid of what he's becoming. But Henry wants to experience the euphoria he felt during the honeymoon once again. Claire still loves Henry, so hearing this pains her. Understanding this, Henry said that maybe she should leave. Claire had intended to do just that, but at the last moment she changed her mind. Their research continued. Henry is afraid that Elizabeth won't love him because he's grown old. That's why he came up with a mad solution. Claire suspected that Oliver is not Henry's son but his own young genetic copy. However, Oliver remains unaware of this. Elizabeth doesn't know how to react to what she has just learned. It all seemed like a crazy genetic recursion. Two days later, Oliver finally came to Elizabeth and demanded to know what Claire had written about him. Elizabeth told the truth. However, Claire's suspicion might have been wrong because Henry later provided her with a birth certificate for the son. Oliver always hated his father and didn't want to be like him. However, what binds him to the father is the love for Elizabeth. She told Oliver to show his feelings for her. Oliver trusted her. Taking advantage of this, Elizabeth attacked him, took the key and freed herself. She also demanded the door code. 
But suddenly another Elizabeth appeared, holding a gun. The second Elizabeth was convinced that Oliver was Henry. Oliver tried to deceive the second Elizabeth, saying that their enemy was in front of them. But the first Elizabeth insisted that everything Oliver said was a lie. The clone didn't know whom to believe and in the end fired, injuring both Oliver and Elizabeth. Despite her injuries, Elizabeth tried to escape. However, as soon as she stepped outside, another shot rang out. The clone pursued her. In the final moments of her life, Elizabeth saw the clone leaning over her. Elizabeth whispered something to her. In the next scenes, we see the new Elizabeth reading Claire's journal. One night, Claire woke up to a scream and hurried downstairs. She realized that Henry had disposed of another clone. Claire was about to call the police, but Henry advised her not to. If Claire says that someone who passed away 10 years ago has deceased here, the police will think she's insane. Claire realized that Henry was ill. He in turn said that all these copies were not as Elizabeth. That's why he decided to end them all. Reading this, Elizabeth couldn't hold back her tears. Soon Claire returned. Elizabeth was about to leave for good. When the door opened, Elizabeth handed Claire the journal and simply walked away. Elizabeth had always dreamed of marrying a brilliant man who would take her far away from everything ugly into their own world. But now Elizabeth had awakened. 